Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> All right, you ready? Yeah. What's going on, folks? It's Rob Drew, and we're talking today about Shout Radio Automation. Now, the thing to understand about Shout Radio Automation, just to grasp your head around this, is this is not your typical uh, automation that you will see with something like Centova or some other kind of program. What this actually is, is an encoder that is on a tier three server that has a great interface. It, uh, the program they use that they bind the interface to, Liquid Soap, is fantastic. It is a fully functional, versatile scheduler that has the power of one of these uh, multi-thousand dollar automations, but at the same time, it's all in the cloud. And that's the beauty of it. You navigate it through your browser. So when we talk about this automation, so when you first log in, you're going to have a uh, basically a blank vanilla format that's going to say enter your IP, enter your server name. Now you go through this process, right? So the next thing you do to get started is you go to your content. Now you'll notice that there's content already here. Content right here. Now you'll notice that there's already content listed in here while it's been played with, right? You basically can create different categories. Now in the uh, vanilla format, when you first get Shout Radio Automation, they give you a couple f formats like music heavy, music light, music medium, other salsa and station IDs, right? So by clicking one of these files, you basically have a file here. So let's go ahead and go to our music light for a second, right? Now you'll notice that all this music has been uploaded to this automation. Now to upload music to your automation, you're simply going to hit browse. You're going to look for your music. Uh, trying to remember where I keep it on this laptop. I want to say it's in documents. There we go. And then you just uh, simply pick out your music. So we're going to pick out some... Uh, What's going on folks? Rob Drew and I'm here to talk about Shout Radio Automation. So what is Shout Radio Automation? What makes it different from everything else? Well, let's understand for a second about what Shout Auto Radio Automation really is. It's not your typical vanilla Centova, I'm going to attach myself to the server and just start throwing files. It's not a proprietary program that's exclusive to any form of server. What it actually is, is an encoder. And this encoder is sitting on a tier 3 server. And not only is it sitting on a tier 3 server with a great amount of bandwidth, but it actually is it has the ability to stream to different formats of servers, whether it's Shoutcast, Icecast, Ice2. Anything that you can stream to with your common computer, if it's a Shoutcast or Icecast encoder, Shout Radio Automation does it. So to understand the power of Shout Radio Automation, I'm going to take you through today and unlock the potential and possibilities of what you can really do with this program. So let's first go to settings and take a look. Now you'll notice you have your user accounts. Now this is your basic account that you start with with the owner, your creator of your radio automation. So what you're going to do here is you're going to basically take your account type and create a new account. So if you're the station manager or the owner, you can create another owner account for a person to have the same abilities as you. You can also create a station manager account where someone has control of the scheduling. And of course, DJ account. Now this is great because let's say we have DJ Dar and his email address is, you know, something at Wasteville at 37.com, whatever his password is, junkie. You're not sure about this guy, but you want to give him a chance for his show. Well, there it is. Limit his login hours so he can be logged in during certain hours. You can do that. You can give this guy access, and as soon as you hit add account, it's going to send him an email with his password and his login information so he can log in just as you did. Now, if something goes wrong and you need to take that information away, you can pull that. But overall, you know, just depending on what you want to give and who you want to give to, you basically have that user account privileges. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is station settings right here. <clears throat> 
This is our basically the station name, the genre, the URL, all the things that you would put in your typical Shoutcast or Icecast encoder from when you're streaming from home. Whether you're using Edcast or whatnot, you're going to go ahead and fill it there. Now your list at shoutcast.com basically says if you want to be added to the Shoutcast YP, which is currently in existence, even though I don't know if it's new ownership, Radio Nami is going to do away with the uh, YP altogether, but you have that option. No more creating difficult passwords, no more writing Shoutcast saying, hey, why can't I see my radio station on the air? It's all done for you. And that's the nice thing about this program, ease peace of mind. If you're not looking for ease and peace of mind, this might not be the program for you. If you're looking to feel frustration and slam your head against the wall multiple times, this is definitely probably not the program for you. Now we're going to get down to our encoders and servers. The YP stands for Yellow Pages. Basically, it's the Shoutcast.com directory that currently exists on Shoutcast.com. Now, uh, now you're going to pick your time zone. Now, this is relevant with your time zone because maybe you have DJs from other time zone. But whatever time zone you pick, that is going to be your station time for when you see uh, your schedule for the day. And we'll go into that later. And then, of course, set schedule, schedule uh, reloading times for schedule reload. Don't want to go into that now. We'll go into that later. Let's talk about your encoder settings real quick. So right now, I've gone ahead and set an encoder to this server. This automation is streaming to this server. So what's cool about that is that you can set multiple encoders. Now we're going to go into the the big hoopla of why this program is so great here shortly. Now the cool thing about setting multiple encoders here is that I can set multiple encoders from my tier 3 server streaming right to multiple servers and multiple formats. If I want to use AAC Plus, I can go ahead and do that. If I want to use MP3, I can go ahead and do that. If I want to go ahead and set uh, four computers up for the same stream but at different bit rates, yes, I can do that. Now, the other cool part about this, and this is the, the big hoopla I was talking about earlier, if I want to do live and override this, I can actually do that too. And that is what makes this program so great. You can actually just go ahead and live override it. I don't think you have the setting enabled here. But uh, yeah, you can basically set up a live encoder and just override the whole program with the whole automation. And we'll go into that how to do that later. Uh, default cross fade length. Now we have two seconds, but you can set the cross fade for further. Cross fade threshold. This is uh, involving the volume, uh, things that, you know, basically the sound as it comes in, comes out. Now, I definitely don't want it 60 seconds, so let's go ahead and set it for about 10 seconds. Normalize content volume. Now, normalization content up on upload. Now, one thing that every streamer knows is that you have to use MP3 gain if you want your audio from a remote automation to uh, all sound the same. Well, not with Shout Radio Automation. It actually has a normalizer built into the program. So the moment you upload your audio content, you're not getting different volume levels. You're getting one volume level. And not only that, but you can actually set the audio where you want it to be. Artist separation. Do not repeat an artist within two hours. What about three? What about four? You can do that with this program. Daily auto scheduling. Basically, say you're not sure if you're even going to be there to schedule your show and your programming for that day. Well, you simply click that button to leave it in the hands of the, the uh, Shout Radio Automation, and it, you've basically put it into dead stick. As long as it, you've set it some rules, it'll just go ahead and run by itself. Content FTP upload, right? Say you have FileZilla. You can upload audio of that method. Now, the other method that you can use to upload audio is through your content itself, your schedule, your basic content libraries itself. Now, we're going to go ahead and create a new category. I, you, why, why are we going to do that? It's just because I'm showing you from the beginning and from scratch how to do this. So, let's create the content category demo. Content, create category, demo. And we're going to give this file a color. I like that color. Now, what is this category? It's going to be music. 
Yeah, sometimes. All right. Display titles in stream? Yes. Yes, we want to. We want to display that MP3 ID3 data. So we're going to say yes. I want to see the title of the music in the stream. Now, why would you disable it? Say you have audio that is uh, always reoccurring, stuff that you're constantly shooting out and spitting out into the stream, right? Stuff that uh, you normally wouldn't just throw out there, but you're spitting it out so fast that you're time stamping it for dates. Well, you can basically turn it off, and when it comes to those audio files, it won't spit that into the stream. It'll just keep the last ID3 tag, and then it'll skip to the next one. The parent category. Now, say you have a certain music file format that you want to categorize under a different file directory. Something specific, but it still falls under a, a different file. Like, uh, we had, uh, let's say we had rock. And I said, well, there's sometimes when I just wanted to randomly pick between one, uh, any kind of rock, and then sometimes where I want to pick between 70s, 80s, or 90s rock. Well, you can go ahead and throw certain categories under another category. So I, I can actually just go ahead and put this under music heavy rotation and what will happen is any file in that directory can get thrown in when this appears in my automation or when I wanted to just automate this file itself I can go ahead and just individually select that now I know it kind of seems maybe over your head a little bit but we're gonna get to all this and everything's gonna make sense here so just write it out with me so we're gonna leave it no parent for now song separation this basically gives you uh, the it's call it the randomness of a song queuing out of this file. You can basically set it so it's 100% random and the same file could pop up six or seven times. You could set it to 0% and it'll more than likely play in playlist format. Volume and fade settings. Now, say for your radio station you want to set the whole station as a whole to have a crossfade, but not these files. These files are something where you're talking and you don't want it to feel like that crossfade. You want it to keep in that full volume, that full fidelity all the way through. You can start at full volume, fade in duration, fade out duration, start the next track, start the daytime uh, day part. We're not going to go into day parts right now. And of course, set default auto move day. Say you were starting a file that where you wanted to say new hits. Now, you don't need new hits file to always be there because you put 100 songs in your new hits for that month and a month later it's no longer new hits. So basically what you can do is you can have this enabled so your new hits folder that you have playing once an hour, right, moves automatically to your music heavy rotation so you can refill that new hits molder. It's a, it's a nice nifty little feature. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and just enable this this file directory now and there is right there is our demo folder and I'm going to click it which has nothing in it. Now I can use FileZilla to go ahead and move files and everybody's kind of familiar with FileZilla but I really don't want to use FileZilla. Let's look at another method. I'm just going to hit browse my documents uh, and I'm going to just pick a song at random. Let's go ahead and pick some Bjork. Boom. So I picked Army of Me by Bjork. Now, the, the title of the song isn't appearing correctly, so I'm going to show you what we can do about that in a second. Let's go ahead and upload that file. The upload is started. We're just going to kick back for a second while that song gets uploaded. And in my content, there it is, Army of Me. Now, you'll notice that it actually corrected itself by looking at the file and saying, yes, the title of the name of the, is Bjork. The title of the song is Army of Me. And here's the link. Now let's preview it to make sure that it's the song I really think it is. Oh, look at that. Now I can actually listen to my content without interrupting my automation. Something you can't regularly do with encoders. But you can do it with Shout Radio Automation. So yes, that is indeed the song I was looking for. Now say we wanted to add some special rules to this song. Uh, well, where we needed to change anything. If I say the name of this title was wrong, I can go ahead and change that here under the title category. If I wanted to move it to a different category besides demo, I could do that here. If I wanted to say it's a different album or a different year or even different comments, which I'm going to go ahead and remove that comment now, I can do that here. Is this song active in my uh, playlist? Yes. Now, if I list it inactive, right, for whatever reason, 
this won't play with the rest of the files in this directory. And we'll again go into that a little bit later. Now, here's the really cool part. Leading and tailing, my favorite part of all of this. Say I want it to be introduced by a file, right? I can do that. So if I want to go ahead and set this song up so every time it plays, there's another file that introduces it, that can happen. Say I want it to be, instead of leading, I want it to be tailing. So after that song plays, there's a file selected that says, that was Bjork, right? I can do that. And it'll do it automatically, seamlessly, every single time. Now, say every time this file plays, I want it to play something from a different category. If you, if I had a whole file set up of, hey, if you like this artist, make sure you check out our website, blah, blah, blah. You can download it for free. I can do that. It's a file that, now that's really one of those kind of flavors and features that you really don't see in many other automations. They just really haven't thought it out. And that's the beauty of Shout Radio Automation. They really took the time with this to think out these kind of events, think out these kind of scenarios. Think outside the box a little bit, so to speak. So we're going to go ahead and not change anything to that song. It's great as is, right? Uh, you know, and while I'm going to just go ahead and just pick a couple other songs, you know, just upload them right there, Johnny on the spot. Just pick it, upload it, and we're done. All right. Now, you'll notice that it's very relevant that it goes ahead and takes all the length of your songs. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why does it need to take the length of all these songs? Well, what it's going to do is it's going to create an average, which is going to be important and relevant to your clock wheel. Let's go away from Bjork for a second. Let's, uh, let's pick some Black Sabbath. Why not? Sold our soul for rock and roll. Children of the grave. Boom. Upload that file. Done. Now, the, the reason that this is so relevant is because when we, after I, this uploads, I'll go ahead and click over to the schedule block right here. Boom. You'll notice in our schedule block right here, this is the day schedule. It's actually done all the math for today's schedule. In our clocks, this clock has been set. Now, this is the average length. So we're going to go ahead and start a new clock. New clock. And you'll notice that there's nothing here. All that's in here right now is a station ID. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag this demo over to my new clock wheel. Boom. And now I'm going to do it again. And now I'm going to do it again. And basically what I'm doing is I'm telling my automation that at 429 I want a song from demo to play, followed by another song from demo. Followed by another song from demo. What is demo? That's that previous file we made with all these different songs that we just put into that file. And then, after three songs, I want to play the station ID. And it's going to look at that and say, okay, well, if it has three songs that average 419.29 in length, right? Then the average length is going to be 13 minutes and 35 seconds for this clock wheel right now. You, Rob, you need to add more. And the reason why is because you want your average clock wheel to be about an hour. So, We'll probably add another demo in there. Another station ID somewhere. How about right there? And I can add songs from another music file, even the one that Tito had created. Just kind of drag and drop right there. Boom. Hey, look at that. Could throw a voice track in there, which is going to become pertinent here shortly. Another demo. And another demo. And you can see it's taking all the time averages from each of one of these files, and it's basically making a collective average length right here. What you're looking to do is create about an hour in your clock wheel. Now, you want to go over that hour just slightly, and I'll show you why. I'm just going to drag these same three songs over and over and over until we get to about one hour. All right. So you'll notice that we're now at 1 minute 7 seconds. So I'm saying, oh man, I'm over my clock wheel. If this does it as is, it's just not going to roll right, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the last two, we're going to select this D. And what that stands for is droppable. 
Now what's going to happen is when we, Shout Radio is going to take this clock wheel right here. And it's going to take all these averages from all the music and all the station IDs and everything. And it's going to start just generating a, basically a scheduled content playlist all the way from the morning to midnight, right? Every single day, it's going to make you a track. So I can pretty much look at any given time and see the hours. Now, when it does all this, right, there's going to be moments where it's going to say, okay, I just scheduled an hour, but there's an hour and five minutes, an hour and eight minutes, because, you know, the, the actual, rant, the actual uh, content clock wheel, you know, it's that one minute and seven minutes is based up on an average. So there might be a couple of songs that's above that, that average time. So it's going to look at those songs, you know, look at this clock wheel, and it's going to see the clock's droppables down here. And it's going to say, okay, I don't need to carry this file. This isn't something critical. I do need to carry my voice tracks and my station IDs and some music medium. But this droppable down here, I can go ahead and just toss that out the window. So let's go ahead and just drop that file. And when it creates the schedule. Trash can is what you were doing. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's roll that back a second. Yeah, that's so, right. Just keep going. And, and all right. So when it creates this clock wheel, what's going to happen is it's going to basically schedule it and say, OK, I want to create the first hour, the second hour. Oh, the third hour has an hour and 10 minutes worth of file data. And it's going to go ahead and drop these files that has D on it. It's going to drop it until it fits right within an hour. And it's going to say, OK, that's about an hour. Perfect. And it's going to go to create the next hour and the next hour and the next hour. And before you know it, you have a whole schedule. Now you'll notice right now that uh, now it's going to the music. Just uh, skipped over to the next track and it's playing the song right now. And it goes through. Now you'll see these things where you see voice tracks. And you're like, what is this thing, right? Well, this is the beautiful thing about this automation. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Uh, usually you want to run this in Internet Explorer, but I've heard rumor that uh, it does work for Firefox. And I'm going to say new. No. Let's go ahead and take this, copy it, and open up Internet Explorer. No, just keep it running. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. Oh, oh wow, you're on server 7. All right. Uh Yeah, go ahead and cut it for a second. All right, so we're back and uh I'm in Internet Explorer right now. So we're going to go ahead and click this voice track and uh, click record now. Uh, i got to update my Java real quick. That would explain why. So if your computer prompts you for a Java download, go ahead and do a agree start download. Okay. All right. So. Real quick, we're going to start with the automation and how this. Oh. Let's just roll with it. All right, so real quick, we're going to start with uh, the automation and how this works, right? So, first, let's talk about events. Now, you've got the clock wheel, you've kind of seen the music. We'll go back to the voice tracking thing here a little bit later. Let's talk about the event scheduler for a second. Now, in this highlighted box over here, you have event type. And you can set different kinds of events from scheduling a clock, starting the automation, stopping the automation, and of course, scheduling a relay. Now, this relay you can basically set up so it's a schedule is hourly reoccurring or daily reoccurring or weekly reoccurring or a one-time event. And uh, if it's a weekly reoccurring, you set the date, the time, which is the time clock that you use from whatever location that you set in the settings. And then you say, okay, relay source and length, right? 
So if we're relaying Tom Hartman, uh, we'll go ahead and set that as an ice cast thing and set in the information and uh, we're relaying it. You can say how long you want to do it, add new event and you're done. And of course you can always change events right here. And if you want to jump ahead with the event and just have it immediately start, you can just hit start now and stop it now. Now, here's where you get some power that you can't do with most other radio stations. And this is, again, why the cloud is so awesome. Say there's a live show that you want to show, right? But it doesn't have a, a rebroadcast file. It only basically gives you a live connection file. But you want to have that on your station. What you can actually do is say, okay, station, I want you to record another station at this date, at this time, Here's the name, here's the IP, here's the port, and uh, remove this file after 14 days. And you can basically tell it if you want to record Tom Hartman for live broadcast for later. Boom. Done. Uh, if you want to record a live show on your station, you can do that. And uh, that's a, it's, a, it's a pretty nice nifty little feature that they've built in. And... Uh, just uh, it's it's all around fully featured. What can I say? When 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 would you use this and and why? When would you use this and why? Say you had Tom Hartman, right? Ta say Tom Hartman didn't immediately after a show was done broadcast a live file. Say you have a let's not say even talk Tom Hartman for a second. Let's just talk a random radio show from a guy that runs a radio station and he wants to actually go ahead and uh, offer you something like his show, right? But he doesn't understand about recording a show. He doesn't understand taking the time to do it. He just says, you know, I, I want to offer you my show, but you just got to relay us. Well, relaying is usually confusing. And maybe you don't want to relay him live because he might say something stupid. So you say, okay, his show starts at 12, and I want to let, let people listen to his show at 4. Well, you don't have to sit there and manually record his show. You could actually just simply give his show a name the blah blah show what day his show appears whether it's Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday or Saturday right how long you want this thing to record for two hours one hour 15 minutes five minutes right and you basically select another station enter the information and you're done now let's talk about advertising say you have an underwriter Create the underwriter's name, his email, his contact information, right? All his, addif his uh, additional information. And by creating this, it'll basically give him uh, active past campaigns where he can actually see all the listeners that are hearing his commercial when it plays. It'll give him a demographic report, the whole nine. But uh, moreover, you can manage the spots that, you know, basically whatever campaign it is, you select it. Uh, here's the file spot. If he wants to change it, he can do it remotely. He basically gets his own private little login that he can actually change the MP3 file. Uh, you give it a name so you can see it in your automation, a start date and a stop date that you've given your uh, underwriter, and uh, it's a really nice nifty little tool for underwriters. Uh, it'll actually do output reports, uh, easy management, the whole, ni the whole nine. Uh, let's see, what else? Advanced settings, not really relevant. Request settings. Oh yeah, you can do a user request for music. Where you could, it'll actually go ahead and give you a script to put on your website so people can actually request music during certain hours. Uh... You can, we've already seen that. Have it monitor additional servers, which I just kind of go without because there's really no point to it unless you're really businessy. User accounts, and then of course your advanced settings. Now, Live 365, if you're using that for a licensing group, you can go ahead and enable that. Uh, TuneIn is a program that people like to listen to on the web, very interactive, very works very mobily. You can enable the API script, Abcast performance reporting, uh, update listener stats. You can have it so it sets it up immediately or every two minutes. I prefer every two minutes 
because there's less load on your automation. Uh, scheduling. Scheduling daily is really simple. Let's go to schedule real quick. We can recreate this day schedule. I hit OK, right? And the automation is going to take the scheduling clocks that it has, and it's basically going to build the automation. And it'll tell you, OK, we created 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24. Oh, hey, we're done. Here's your 24-hour schedule. And then you just view the schedule. Take a look. And if there's something you want to change in there, you say, oh, well, you know, I know uh, Camille plays way too much, right? I'm going to hit an Add button, right? I'm going to select uh, Demo and Bjork. And that song is now added to that time. And we'll just go ahead and delete Kimmo. Uh, voice tracks. New voice track. I'm going to try my luck and see if it works this time. So basically, we've left voice tracking in the clock. And the idea is that you can click the voice tracking. And in a perfect world, this Java applet opens. And it's just basically a little recording Java app. Right now, it seems to be having issues. So we'll come back to that. That'll be another video. Let's see if uh, Shout Radio Automation has actually answered this. Now, Shout Radio Automation also has its own tech support. Uh, great staffing. It's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, Google.com. There we go. Let's see if they have. Nope, I want Gmail. Hey, hey. All right. So let's talk about these clocks for a second, because these clocks look a little confusing. I want to break down what do you have. You have two kinds of clocks. You have the clock wheel, and you have the demo clock, right? Or uh, excuse me, you have the schedule clock. So your clock wheel is basically how one of your clocks is laid out. By theory, you can use a default clock wheel every day for 24 hours a day. Now, say you wanted to lay down different clocks. Let's make a demo clock, right? And in that demo clock, we wanted to use content from my folder. Uh, it, won't, it won't let me schedule my folder because I haven't put anything in it. Let me go ahead and put something in, in the my folder file. So we're going to go to my folder. We're going to go ahead and upload a file to my folder. Let's go to desktop. Let's look for beat transit generation, BTG. Actually, I don't think I have any on this laptop. All right, let's, uh, let's just pull a song from random. Baba O'Reilly, upload the file. So in this example, I'm uploading a Baba O'Reilly, but say this is your show, right? Say you're a content producer and this is your show. You're going to go ahead and upload your file for that week to that. Now let's say I want to upload another file, right? I have a bunch of shows already created and I just want to go ahead and just upload the world. So what I could do, no, that's not what I want to upload file. What I could do is I could go ahead and go to documents, let's go to uh, ACDC, oh hey, there we go, be transit generation. So I'm going to go ahead and upload my show. It's probably going to take just a little bit longer than the average song to go up there because it's about, I think it's about five or, actually I shouldn't, shouldn't be that many megabytes, maybe like 300. 
But uh, basically, this is what exactly what it's going to happen. You're going to upload your show. And you're going to have other shows that you upload, but you don't want to play. So first, I'm going to wait for this upload to complete. Once it pops up in this window right here, it's completed. Try to stop it. It fixes blah, blah, blah. All right, so let me grab this mic real quick here. All right, so one thing to actually note here is that if you want to upload for larger files, what you basically do is you're going to take your FTP upload name, enter it into copy and paste. Post. Whatever password you pick for FTPs, enter that into password. You're basically going to take your host which is your down here at. copy that put that into the host name paste quick connect it's going to validate Where is the quick connect? right here <clears throat> Uh, I might have entered something is is wrong for the password name. I am not connected. So what we have here is what's called a bulk uploader using uh, Canis J's uh, FTP for this shot radio automation. Now what we're going to do is we're just basically going to drag a couple of songs here into our automation here. And we're just dragging away. We're just throwing files in there like no tomorrow. And you'll notice it's a lot more rapid than actually going and using the uh, browser-based manager. And I'm going to go ahead and throw my own f file in there too. So let's go ahead and go down to music. Let's go to, uh, actually, let's go to documents because I think I saved it in documents. And uh, let's go ahead and I think I had it in ACDC. And hey, look at there. So, oops. Not what I want to drag in there, but boom. There it goes. So it's it's up. It's uploading it now. So this is in FileZilla. Yep, and you notice all these songs popping to the left side over here. Let's go ahead and just stop these two right here. Uh, delete. No thanks. Skip. So I've dragged my Beat Transit Generation show to FileZilla. And uh, it's in there. So let's go ahead and go back over here. Let's scroll up. Let's go to content. Now, I'm going to go import from FTP. And here's all the FTP files that I have. So we're going to go ahead and throw this one to uh, the my folder. Import content. And there it is, boom. So just, we just want to check it real fast to make sure everything works. 
you tune back into the beat trans generation we are so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're i want say this was another part of my my uh show right now i want this one and this one i have both these shows but i want this one to be the one that's active so we're just going to go ahead and edit the options right So I'm clicking that little white red box looking thing. It's actually supposed to be a peeled piece of paper, but it's so small you can barely read it. And we are going to go ahead and say unclick active. So this file is no longer active in the automation. It can't be selected. Save changes. Now, whenever this automation is scheduled, anything that's selected active, basically the file that's currently active for that week, is going to be the one playing. So if I go into my clock and I go to my demo clock, or excuse me, my new clock, right? I can go ahead and just drag uh, my folder in there and boom, that's my folder for my show. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop a lot of programming because the average lake is 123 minutes. So obviously we're going to go ahead and drop some of these other songs that I'm using to fill the killer. Droppable, droppable. And now we are ready to roll. So now we're going to go ahead and take my demo clock, right? And we're going to give it a schedule for what day we want it to play. So we're going to go to our scheduling clock, right? Now I'm looking at the scheduling clock right now for Spanish hour. Or no, I'm looking at it for the default clock. So let's go to, uh, let's go to demo clock. Or excuse me. Let's let's go to uh, new clock. All right. So now we're going to schedule this clock. So I have no opened slots right now, right? I want it to play at two o'clock. But I know that this clock is in use by another clock. So we're going to go ahead and look through all the clocks. Let's figure out which clock is using that, that hour. And we are good to go. So those are my two selected hours there. All the other clocks are in use by a different hour. We're going to go ahead and save the schedule and boom. Now my, uh, my schedule is, is set with that clock. Now we can go to options and change that clock name if we need to change it. But ideally it's probably going to be the name of the clock of whoever person is that hour. So concept is simple. Now say we wanted to do something a little bit easier. Say automatically scheduling was just not the cup of tea at all. We just wanted to do something really simple. Well, we've got all these shows here from 4 to 3.30, right? And we just want to let's just delete all these. Why do we have them? New file.
All right, so say you just wanted to make a real simple schedule, yada, yada, yada. Click the plus, right? Click a category, say, okay, my folder, I want it to be this file, right? And it'll throw it in there. So 9 o'clock now, our 9 o'clock is a little over.